3.3, we're going to grasp systems of linear inequalities. So let's talk about what those words mean. Systems means we're going to have two or more equations. I think we'll only have two in every problem. Linear means they're going to be straight lines. Inequalities means we're going to have to shade. So we're graphing, we're shading in between two lines. The way we do this is we graph each inequality and then we figure out where the common shaded area is. So we might shade above or below on certain lines. We want to see where that shaded region overlaps. So let's take a look at what that means. So I'm going to start using blue for the first equation, first inequality. It says y is greater than negative 2x minus 5. I know my y-intercept is at negative 5. I know my slope is down 2 over 1, or I could alternatively say up 2 left 1. And I need a dashed line because it's greater than. Let's do some shading. It's a greater than, so we're going to shade above. We go through the same process now with inequality 2. I'll switch to red for that. I see my y-intercept this time is 3. And my slope is 1, up 1 over 1. This time I want a solid line. And I want to shade below. I'll shade below with a different color. I'll use yellow. Notice where they overlap. The yellow and blue makes green. Green is actually my answer. So when I'm checking your work, I don't need to see this region shaded or this region shaded. It's okay if you do. What I do need to see is the green region shaded. And you should shade that darker than the rest just so I know you're telling me that's your final answer. That means any point inside that green region makes both of those inequalities true. Let's take a look at another one. I'll use blue line for inequality 1. I'll use red line for inequality 2. I suggest you try these on your own first. You're looking for the overlapping piece. If you want to try this on your own before you see me work it out, go ahead and pause. You'll notice I used a dashed line for the blue line and a solid for the red because of the inequality symbols. On the first one, I'm going to shade below because if I were to get y by itself, I would not have to flip the sign. I would just shade below. So I'll shade below the blue line. And the second one, y is already by itself, so I'm going to shade above the red line. Then I have to ask myself, where's the green? Nothing got shaded overlapped. That's because these two inequalities don't overlap at all. So you might have guessed it. The answer is no solution. That's something that can only happen when we have two lines that are parallel. So these ones look a little more complicated. We have to graph both of these. I'll follow my same pattern. I'll do one in blue, one in red. You should know the second one is a V shape. It's the absolute value graph. So it's going to have that V somewhere. You should know where to put that. If you don't remember how to graph absolute value inequalities, you might want to go review that section in chapter two. Once we've got our two border lines, we have to decide where we're going to shade. The first one says less than or equal to three. So I'm going to shade below. And instead of actually shading everywhere below, I'm just going to draw a little arrow so I know I'm going to shade below that line. And on the red dashed line, it says y is greater than, so I'm going to shade above that one. We can already tell where the overlapping area is, so we just have to fill it in. We don't have to shade the whole page. We just have to look for that area where they overlap. If you choose the right area, all is well. 
At this point, you can try these on your own. Or you can do them later. Go ahead and pause the video and try to figure out what's going on here and what you're going to do to solve it. We're told we need to make a system of inequalities that deals with the regular and sale prices of the shoes. So maybe we could say X is the regular price of a shoe, and Y could be the sale price of a shoe. Now let's see what's really going on here. We're getting 10 to 60% off of our shoe, and the shoes are normally 20 to 80 dollars. If we're going to try to figure out a good val a good range of values for my X values, my cheapest shoe would be my $20 shoe, 60% off. So I might want my X range to be from cheapest, my regular price could be as 20, the most expensive, 80. For my Y values, the cheapest shoe I could possibly buy would be a $20 shoe, discounted 60%. You can use a calculator to figure out what that would be. Turns out that the cheapest possible shoe might be $12. And the most expensive shoe would be my $80 shoe that's only on sale for 10% off. So I can figure out 80 times 10%. Find out that our most expensive shoe is $72. At this point, we're ready to draw our X and Y axis. I don't need a negative area on it because all prices are positive. I do need to put my little squiggly in to indicate that I'm not wasting blank white space. My cheapest x value is 20. My biggest x value is 80. My smallest y value would be 12, but just to keep the numbers nice, maybe I'll say 10. And instead of 72, maybe I'll say 80, just to keep nice numbers. We can fill in the tick marks in between. Now let's take a look at what's going on with our possible shoe prices. Our cheapest $20 shoe would be $12. And our most expensive $80 shoe, using the 60% discount still, would be 60% of 80, $48. That's our price range for getting the lowest price discount on all the shoes, using all of our inputs and getting 60% discount on our outputs. That would be our first inequality. We could pay something above that. So I'll do some shading to say that we could be paying above that, but I'll do it later because we also want to find out our maximum price. The maximum price we'd pay for a $20 shoe would be 10% off. 10% off of 20 would be 18 Whereas 10% off of 80 would be 72. You can draw that line as well. So our actual range of prices could fall anywhere in between those. That's our shaded area. Going back to what the problem was originally asking, said graph the system of inequalities. We've done that. Now it's saying use the graph to estimate the range of possible prices for footwear that is regularly $70. So we go on our graph and say a $70 shoe could now be 30 something. In fact, I think it comes out to exactly 70 times 60%, which would be actually $42. My graph is just maybe not drawn quite to scale. And the most expensive $70 shoes would be the ones that are only 10% off. 70 times, and then take off 70% would be 63. So based on this sale, $70 shoes could be anywhere from $42 to $63. At this point, you can pause the video and try this on your own, or you could do that later. Otherwise, we are done with this lesson.